Hello everyone, welcome back to part 8 of the making of my Horace Kephart knife. So today we're going to do some sharpening, we're going to get an edge on it, and we're going to um, epoxy the scales on. So what I have here is the Lansky uh, sharpening system. What this consists of is this clamp has simple screws, a couple of screws to tighten it down. You put your blade in there, okay, and then I made this little stand because this didn't come with a stand and it was very hard to hold it in my hand and keep it accurate. They actually sell these, um, but I didn't know they sold them at the time, so I just made this. It's a dowel piece of wood clamped to my um, table, and there's another piece of wood right here where this just sits on, and then you can take it off, flip it around to do the other side. Now, these, um, they all come in different sizes, uh, different grits. So right now I'm using the extra coarse. Um, when you set these up, you want to make sure that the, um, let me see if I can get something here. You want to make sure that this rod is even with the bottom of the uh, stone, okay? And then uh, it comes with oil. I don't use the oil, I use water. So I'm going to show you how to uh, do this. Um, it's going to take a long time because right now it's a butter knife. right? So we want to get it into a, uh, a razor blade. So it's going to take a while, but just go slow. okay? Now it has different degrees on here. I don't know if that's showing up, but 17, 20, 25, and 30. So we're going to start off at 25. So you're going to want to dip it in the water. I used to count how many strokes I did on each side, but um, yeah, that got old real quick. So you just kind of, you know, do the same amount on both sides as best you can. And um, if this dries out, make sure that you keep it wet. You'll know when it dries out. You'll see that the you'll start getting like dust on there. You don't want that. So just a couple tips, if you can see I have my finger here, that's so that I keep it at the exact angle all the time. I kind of just have my finger where it, it can't go down, so that's, that's a tip. And then, it, um, excuse me, if this was a finished blade, I would have a piece of tape, like electrical tape underneath there, because uh, it, it does move around a little bit, and this is aluminum. Um, so it doesn't make any like scratches, but it kind of makes some marks. So if it was a finished blade, I would have a little piece of electrical tape on both sides just to make sure it doesn't mar it. But so you get the idea. You're going to just keep doing that until you get a nice even line across with the course. This is actually the extra course. And then you'll progressively go down. The different colors are um, this one is the blue is a fine, the red is coarse, so we would go from the extra coarse to the coarse, and then uh, what else we got here? We got medium, we got ultra fine, so we'll work our way down the grits until we get a nice edge on here, and um, we'll do a little bit more polishing on the blade. I'm not going to give it a mirror finish because I noticed that when I have knives that have mirror finishes on them every little mark on them shows up so I'm probably gonna leave this at like a maybe a thousand fifteen hundred grit uh, finish and then probably do a little scotch bright on it um, and then I'll keep it that way because then it's easy to just clean up and just hit it again with the scotch bright and it's all good so let me continue on with this sharpening and um, then I'll be back. Okay, 
So I have a nice edge on that blade. It's not razor sharp yet, but it's pretty close. So now the next thing is we're going to clean it all off with a um, degreaser. If you don't have a degreaser, you can use like, um, you know, isopropyl alcohol or acetone or something like that. Okay, now we're going to mix up our epoxy. Um, today I'm going to be using this G-Flex 650. Um, this stuff's awesome. It's a, little, it's a little pricey, but it gives you a lot of working time. And uh, I don't have to worry about it setting up in five minutes. Because if you make a mistake, <laughs> yeah, you got to rip everything apart. So we're going to use this, and uh, we'll get some mixed up now. We're going to put the scales on. <clears throat> then we get a little piece of uh, blue painter's tape. Just to protect where I don't want the epoxy to go. I'm going to end up taking it off before it dries. But I want to just not have a huge mess. Make sure you get good coverage. And here's the advantage of slow setting epoxy. If you don't mix enough, you can mix some more. With that five minute stuff, you're dying right now. Okay. Make sure we get some on the pins. Okay, again, the advantage of having the um, slow drying stuff is I can put this down, I can go get rid of these gloves, get new gloves, and try to clean this up a little okay, bit. Okay, fresh gloves. I will get this tape off of here. Just clean up any epoxy we got on the blade looking good this rest of this epoxy I don't care about because um, that's all gonna get ground off so we're gonna let this dry um, takes 24 hours we're gonna hang it this way because that likes to drip down so uh, once it's cured we'll be back we'll cut off the pins we're gonna put some clamps on it right now and um, we'll let this sit up for uh, 24 hours. So I'll be back when that's dry. Okay, it's been 24 hours. And uh, the epoxy is all set up. Looking good. It's looking more and more like a knife. Now I'm going to cut these pins off with the uh, Dremel tool. Just like that, so there's less to grind. So I'm going to cut all uh, both sides of those, and then I'll be back and show you what that looks like. All right, so we have them all pretty flush cut. Now we're going to take this over to the grinder, and we'll start doing a little grinding on there. All right, so we're over at the grinder. We're going to do a little grinding on this, make these pins flush, and start cleaning it up.
I'm gonna go slow because I don't want those pins to get too too hot matter of fact I'm gonna get a little wet rag and I'm gonna cool them off a little bit all right just have a little rag with some water on it There's no reason to be in a rush when you're doing this Alright, so you get the idea. I'm going to get that pretty flat and then I'll be back. Okay, so we have our pins flush. Now it's a matter of just grinding, and grinding, and grinding. So I'll, st you know, I'll start doing it, I'll show you, and then I'll, uh, I'll bring you back as I progress. Alright, so you get the idea. I'll uh, not bore you watching this and I'll get it a little closer to finished and uh, we'll be back. Alright, so we got a nice profile going. As you can see, it just barely hit the actual knife, the tang of the knife. So that was 80 grit paper. Now I'm going to move over to uh, 120 grit. And we're going to start to get the dimensions. We're going to measure, um, it goes from a half an inch here to three quarters of an inch here. So let's see what we got. Because it has a tapered uh, stocks. Okay, so we're running at, at the thinnest point. We got about another sixteenth, almost a, I guess almost about an eighth of an inch. So centimeters, we're at one, one and a half up there. And down here, we're at the thickest part. We'll measure it right here. We're just under an inch here. So we got a lot of stock to remove here. Um, so I'm going to put some layout lines exactly where I want them. And then we'll continue with the um, 120 grit paper. And then I'll be back uh, when I get there. Okay. So we got it down pretty close to the final dimensions. You can start to see the uh, tang coming through. So the rest of this is going to be done by hand. No more grinding, no more machines. So I'll get this uh, set up and I'll show you a little bit of handwork on it. And then uh, we'll be ready for some finish and final sharpening. Alright, so here I'm just using some regular old blue painter's tape. Just put it on the blade to uh, protect it. Um, I got some sanding blocks here, if you saw my sanding video. This is a small one. And uh, I got some 120 grit paper here. I'm gonna get this on the block. Um, it's just an old belt that I'm just cutting pieces on. Now, the great thing about this vise is I can adjust it to any angle I want, and um, the hand sanding begins. It's coming out nice. We'll go all the way up the spine. Lots and lots of hand sanding. Changing the paper out. More sanding, more sanding. Now I'm going to use a, a file to get the contour that I want here at the edge. Just little needle files.
Just take your time, nice and slow, no rush. Flipping it over, that's a little jig I made to hold it in there. Do each side, one side, the other side, till you get it all matched up. And after the uh, filing is done, it's going to be sanded some more. And uh, I'll spend hours and hours and hours uh, hand sanding that. Till I get it exactly where I want it. Back on the jig and more filing. All right, I think this is a good uh, place to end this part. It's getting a little long. Um, got a little bit more sanding on it. And like I said, I, I really, I take my time when it comes to sanding. And uh, the next part, we'll get some finish on it. And uh, we'll possibly build a sheath for it, depending on the time. And um, get a little final sharpening on it. So like always, everyone, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your comments. And... Thanks for coming by, and I hope you're having a great day, and uh, we'll catch you on the next part.